Hello, I'm back with another update for the Cycles plugin for 3ds Max. Today I'll be showing off the new features that were included in the recently released version Beta 202. Um, and the biggest of these features is support for Cycles render passes. So I have a simple scene here set up to show these off. Uh, these are a couple flower models I got off TurboSquid for free. I'll put a link in the description for those. Um, and I'll quick show you how this render is set up. I'll just pull up my setup dialog um, and go over to the render elements tab. And this is where I have all my cycles render passes selected. So if you want to add them here, you just click add uh, and choose the one you'd like to add from this list. Uh, for this, I have most of them included in this image except for the depth passes, which I'll go over later in the video, and also the subsurface passes because there are no subsurface materials in this scene. So, I will do a render quick and show off what all of these look like. And this is, uh, I just I ran the same render before, so this is what the final output will look like. Um, and while we are waiting for this to render, uh, you'll be able to see another minor new feature in this version, and that is uh, these colored squares now will show up around whatever tile is currently rendering. So you can, you can really easily tell uh, which parts of the image are done and which are still rendering. So I'll let that finish up quick. And here I'll just really uh, go over a real basic description of all of these, what these render passes are. Um, if you want more information, you sh can check the uh, manual available on the website. Uh, so this one is UV coordinates. It just shows the UV for each, um, for each part of your model. So uh, the red and green channels show the U and V coordinates, and the blue channel is always at 1. So that's that one. Um, and this one is the, or these three rather, are the transmission lighting. And all of the lighting things, all of the lighting passes are broken up into three components like this. The indirect, direct, and color. And the way these get composited together is indirect and direct are added, and then they get multiplied by color. And then for all the different types of lighting, you do that, the indirect plus direct times color, and then you add those all together to get the final output image. So like I said, this here is for transmission. Uh, next in line, we have normal. This is just the world space normals. Here is another lighting component. This is glossy, just like transmission. We have indirect, direct, and color. And last, we have the diffuse lighting, again, indirect, direct and color. So those are those are helpful if you want to uh, if you want to do a render and then you can tweak it in post without redoing the whole render you can change the lighting around a little bit uh, to make it look more like what you want. And then the other type of render pass I want to show off here is the depth pass. So I'll go over to my other scene and here I just have a real simple scene set up. Um, it's a camera in three planes. The first one is 30 units away from the camera second one is 50, and the last one is 80. So again, I'll go over to my render elements. You see I have a depth element here, and I will render this quick. Oop, I'll pick that viewport, and then I'll render it. And as you can see, this depth pass is entirely white, because what it does is this is an HDR image where each pixel shows you how far away the geometry is at that pixel. So if I right-click to sample these pixels, you can see Actually, I'll move that so the uh, little sample window here doesn't bounce around. Uh, right in the middle, in that greenish square, we have around a value of around 30. If you move a little more to the side for the red square, it has a value of 50. If you move a little farther out, it has 80 for the purple square. And then the background, where there's no geometry at all, it has a value of uh, 10 billion. So, uh, the other thing you can do here that's like a depth pass is a mist pass. And what this lets you do is you can normalize the values so you can have uh, useful values and keep your keep your mist values between 0 and 1 instead of having a bunch of really high numbers like with depth. So if I add a mist path pass and then I render again, you can see that the plane closest to the camera is darker and then the planes that are farther away get lighter. And then you can play around with it by default oops, in the advanced tab 
uh, here's the mist setting so near is how far away from the camera it will start so anything that is less than one unit from the camera will be completely black so like I said this uh, first plane is 30 units away so if I set mist near to 35 then I render you can see that this first plane is now completely black and then the depth is uh, how far it goes past that uh, near distance. So right now the, the near is 35 and the depth is 100, so we'll be able to see things up to 135 units away. If I change the depth to 40, that will mean it can only see things 75 units away, so this back plane should be completely blending in with the background at this point, and it does. And then you can also uh, play with the exponent to choose uh, how how the falloff works exactly. Uh, by default, the exponent is 2.0, which will be good for creating effects like fog or something if you want to fade away uh, geometry that's farther away. Uh, or you can change it to 1, and then it will just be a linear increase from the start to the end. Um, and that is about it. That pretty much covers uh, what's happening here with render passes. Uh, like I said, this these features are available as a version beta 202, which is available now on the website uh, cyclesformax.net. So uh, if you'd like to go give it a try. Thanks for listening.